so I, I used to work in uh, in Procter and Gamble, PNG. I uh, I joined PNG back in 2008 in Beirut. I'm, I'm originally Lebanese. Uh, um, PNG was like part of. Uh, it was actually the dream company uh, to join uh, for me as a marketing student. All the marketing case studies were about PNG. You learn a lot about PNG, so uh, it was a dream come true to join it. Uh, before PNG, however, I worked for two years in a startup, in a tech startup. It was a Dutch uh, company. Uh, they were doing a real estate search engine in Beirut. Uh, I was uh, their first marketing employee. Uh, worked there for two years, and then this uh, startup ran out of funding. So I tried to fundraise. Uh, but I was 23. I tried to fundraise. I tried to uh, open the company myself again. I failed miserably. <laughs> Uh, after I, it, it took me nine months, nine months of fundraising, going to investors, talking to them about uh, about um, real estate monitor Noctacom uh, back then. But then I completely failed. PNG is 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 actually one of the best uh, business schools one can ever join. I believe uh, I learned a lot of uh, you know business skills there, I lot, uh, learned a lot of uh, marketing skills there. Um, um, I consider myself very lucky to have worked for PNG. I worked in PNG for in marketing and in uh, sales, so I did both sales and marketing. I spent four years in Beirut and then uh, four years and a half in Beirut and then I moved to Istanbul uh, with my Turkish wife who worked in PNG. We met actually in PNG Beirut. Uh, she lived for one year in Beirut, in PNG Beirut, and then we moved together to PNG Turkey. I arrived to Turkey, loved PNG Turkey, loved the team, loved everyone here. It was like one big new family for me. Then I hated the Istanbul traffic. And uh, I was like, uh, no, this can't, this can't continue. Uh, so I quit PNG after one year. Uh, Istanbul traffic took its toll on me within one year, so I have no idea how people here continue to deal with it and uh, I decided to, uh, I had this idea and uh, I decided to do it. Uh, actually my, uh, so we, we, we Lebanese, we like to think of ourselves as Phoenicians, right? So, uh, and uh, you know Phoenicians I believe they were like entrepreneurs by blood. So unlike what you, everyone uh, expects like my friend the other day told me when he told his mother that he's an entrepreneur she was like no you are unemployed uh, so he was trying to explain to her no I'm an entrepreneur I think for me it was such an easy thing at least to my you know mom and dad uh, when I told them they were like yeah wow this is great you should do it uh, and you know for them they were not concerned that I'm leaving Procter & Gamble but I think the most important family member that matters here is my wife in the beginning, it was a scary thought. Like, what? Leave PNG? Like, why would you leave PNG? But uh, you know, the more I talked about what uh, to uh, to Burjo, the more she was like, uh, yeah, this this actually makes a lot of sense. Uh, Burjo, I think, uh, not I think, I know that she's she's I believe the biggest supporter of what uh, and of myself. Uh, I think it's thanks to her and to her support up until today. Uh, that Vault uh, became a company and uh, become like, it is what it is today in terms of its growth and uh, uh, the size that it's becoming and all the attention that it's uh, getting. So family is, is, is the first person you sell to when you start your own, uh, your own business. Uh, <laughs> that transition was very hard. So, uh, you know, you work in, in the biggest company in the world, right? Uh, the, the second best, uh, there was just a report two days ago, it's the second best company in the world. Um, you know, they treat you like, they treat you amazingly, they invest in you. You drive a fancy car, you have a very uh, uh, good lifestyle. But then, you, you, you get this idea, which you know, you've become so excited about and so like uh, in a positive way obsessed with that uh, you can't find happiness in just working for a, for a 
corporate that is that great, right? Uh, like PNG, you still find you still you you start looking for things that are different than just you know you know the job or the status or your title, right? You start looking for meaning, and you know I think Volt gave me that the fact that you know there's traffic, uh, the fact that uh, traffic is only getting worse, the fact that 70% of the cars only have a driver in them and four empty seats. Uh, the fact that you know 85% of the seats in traffic are empty are all facts that are just around me, right? That I felt like I would happily dedicate my life uh, to to serve that purpose and uh, solve that. So that was like kind of my north star in terms of should I do this, yes or no, uh, or where do I want to be in 10 years? These are the questions that started, you know, I started asking myself. Uh, it took me two months from you know the time that you know I started working uh, on the idea or like I had the idea and started working on it till the day I resigned. So October 25th, 2013 was the day I completely left PNG and started officially on uh, full time. It's it's a scary experience, uh, I should say, right? It's it's very scary to leave uh, a harbor, a safe harbor like PNG, but you know there's this this saying that. Uh, you know, ships are safer in the harbor, but uh, that's not what they're built for. Uh, ships are built for uh, sailing, right? So I felt like, you know what, I have to say. For me, I, I refer to the story of a Spanish king, I, I forgot his name, uh, back in 19, in 15, year 1519. Uh, they, were, they were invading uh, Mexico, I think, and uh, he asked his, his army he, he went there with an army of 500 soldiers and he asked his army, uh, he said uh, you burn your ships when you get on ground and they said, but we, we, yes, we are fighting for you, we believe in you uh, but we want to go back home after this war and he said, sure, you go back home, but you go back home with their ships and uh, for me, leaving PNG, uh, I, it had to be quitting. It should, shouldn't have been sabbatical or, you know, a break from PNG. No, for me, I had to quit, though I'm not sure. I did not have funding, I did not have money to start this. I have, I have nothing, right? I just have, you know, an idea and a burning passion. Uh, but uh, for me, this was part of the hard decision to take, that, you know, I have to burn the ships because I have to make this work. It's, it's not... You know, it wasn't that easy. It's not like, you know, you come from PNG, we give you money as investors. Investors look for a lot of things uh, before they invest. And uh, that took me uh, seven months, right? And 38 rejections. So I, I was rejected by 38 investors uh, over seven months. So when, when, you, when you think about it, it's, it's not quite that easy of a journey, but it's worthwhile. Regarding competition, uh, yeah, we, we look at Blablacar our, as our main and uh, biggest competitor. Uh, all the other players are, uh, we, we have good local players in Turkey. Uh, I think we only have one uh, good local player. They are uh, doing some good growth, but uh, they are not positioned to, uh, to succeed. The fact that they were the first does not mean that uh, they, will, they will lead the category. Um, Google was not the first search engine, uh, Facebook was not the first um, social network, Amazon was not the first in uh, uh, e-commerce. So this, the same applies to local competition in Turkey that launched before us and to Blablacar. Um, I think Blablacar right now is experiencing a very uh, uh, strong growth because one, they have a great team, I should, I should say that as well. Uh, we, we don't say we have a better team, right? We say we have a great team, they have a great team, and we just think we're greater. And uh, the second and most important thing is uh, Blablacar is growing so fast because uh, they are filling a vacuum. Uh, they are riding the wave of uh, the ride sharing, uh, or uh, not the ride sharing, the, the sharing economy, right? And the, re the sharing economy became possible. Right? This wave became possible because of, you know, 
uh, technology uh, that is driven by social networks like Facebook. Like without Facebook, I don't think this could have been uh, possible. Before Facebook, uh, there was a lot of uh, you know anonymous uh, names and usernames on on the internet. Now it's more like a real name. So Facebook is definitely helping in that. Blablacar started it very early. They did a website before and uh, they, are, they continue to be mostly a website. More than 70% of their uh, usage today is, is web driven. Uh, Blablacar also does intercity. So they would do Istanbul Ankara when they launch in, uh, in, in Turkey. Uh, the reason why we believe and why our investors believe and why everyone around Volt uh, believes that Volt will win over Blablacar is the fact that we are uh, one of their biggest strategic threats. Uh, we are mobile only. We have a knowledge on, on mobile that no other competitor has, right? Uh, we have a sister company that is uh, that has you know the top talent in terms of mobile. Uh, our talent, our whole team is, is a brilliant team. Um, so we are stronger than them on mobile. This is one. Uh, so it goes back to the team and having a great mobile team uh, that serves into uh, a greater product and a better mobile product. This is one. Two, our biggest uh, uh, advantage over, over Blablacar or over any other competitor, I don't need to name them alone, uh, I refer to any other competitor as well, is we are community based. So. We are we, we create trust between users because when you talk about ride sharing, right? Everyone wants to do ride sharing. You already share an elevator, you already share a pool, you already share a bus, you already share a building, you already share a campus, you already share a classroom, you already share a lot of things, right? So why not share a ride? The problem with the ride is that I don't share a ride because I can't trust you. How can I trust you? But you can trust someone if you know to which community they belong and if there's a you know a community verification system and this is this is our edge versus Blablacar. When Blablacar will launch they will launch simply you know Istanbul Ankara. However when we launch and we are launching very soon we will launch in communities so we launch on campus we launch in the residential compound we launch in companies we launch and we verify via your uh, student ID or uh, via your company ID or via your email, student email or company email. So we always verify that you belong to a certain community. It's the fact that I know that you belong to this university, you know that I belong to this university, uh, the fact that you know that I belong to this company, that you work in this company or live in this residential compound are all very strong uh, you know, community uh, examples that can uh, make me trust you. So I believe this is our biggest edge, uh, the fact that we're mobile, the fact that we are a small team uh, and the fact that we are community based will give us a big edge on Blablacar that they can't compete with us, they, they simply cannot uh, follow what we follow and because we are mobile, we will do inner city as well, so we don't do intercity only. Uh, now if you're traveling to Ankara, if you're going to Eskishir, you can on Volt look for a ride and you can share a ride if you're uh, uh, driving your own car. But because it's mobile and it's because it's in your pocket, it's so easy to uh, find a ride from you know, uh, Levant to Atashir or Levant to Kalika. It's It can happen in real time, it can happen inside the city because we have the technology for it. Blablacar does it. Huh, a lot has changed. <laughs> uh, I mean... Uh, I, I, I wouldn't compare it versus uh, the fact that I started my own business. I, w I would compare uh, working in a corporate versus working for a startup, right? You get more meaning working for a startup than working for a big company. Uh, because, especially like depending on the startup, right? But I believe Vault is very powerful in, in the purpose, uh, on the purpose front, uh, on what we do. Every day, everyone you know, wakes up so excited about working, about doing what we do because we are solving a big problem for, for our uh, parents, for our uh, city, for our friends, for our children. We are, we are solving a big problem. We're creating a new way. We're creating a new transportation system, right? So we, we have a big dream and that is one thing that creates uh, happiness 
in terms of the work environment and in terms of you know the way we do work. For us, work is fun. Uh, we we've reached that level that uh, a lot of the team members uh, in the team they join Vault because they feel that there's a happiness, uh, there's a positive energy happening in uh, in the team and in the way we do business that you can't find in any other company. Uh, on the other side, you know, like uh, I'm the one being paid the least, uh, so I don't pay my. I'm not a good boss for myself. Uh, so personally, uh, lifestyle uh, obviously changes. Uh, you know, when you when you take this road for any other entrepreneur, there will be a cost in terms of uh, lifestyle change. Uh, but uh, you start having a different set of friends. That's uh, that's on the social side as well. Um, your friends become uh, they're all entrepreneurs. They're all. Uh, they're all people who started uh, their own business or they're working in a startup as well. So you change because for corporate people you become this boring person who's talking about a mobile app. Nobody cares about For them this is how they see it. Uh, so you start having a different circle of friends. So anyone who's thinking of this change, they should be prepared for this different uh, circle of uh, change. When, when you are working on a corporate life, you have a very, I wouldn't say boring, because I'm a positive person, I always look in a... Well, it's, it's a consistent life, right? You kind of expect, you kind of know what you're going to be making uh, in terms of money next year. Uh, you kind of... Um, there's no worry, right? Uh, it's, it's kind of a relaxed life, right? If you're performing well in your job, it's kind of a relaxed life. Uh, but because it's relaxed, I feel like it's a bit tasteless. When you work in a startup, uh, or when you're an entrepreneur, for example, in my case, uh, it's really the same feeling of a roller coaster. One day you're on top of the world, and before you know it, during the same day, I'm not going to say the next day, during the same day, you're like falling into the ground. You have great news, bad news, during the same exact day, and things keep going up and down. It's not as consistent or a stable thing. So. Now I really understand people who go back to corporate life, but uh, some people are just born for it, right? Like uh, they have it in their blood, and they, you know, the, the tougher the challenge or the tougher the, the jobs become, the, the happier they become. And, and for me, it's, uh, it's a good thing. Uh, I mean, as a Lebanese, uh, coming, coming from Beirut. Uh, let me explain Beirut to, like, I think most people don't know it in Turkey. Uh, Beirut is the exact, exact copy of Izmir. Uh, if you close your eyes, and I take you to one of these two cities, you wouldn't know for, like, a few streets where you are, right? Um, so, people from Izmir would understand uh, what I'm talking about when I move to Istanbul. So, Beirut is a city of two million, right? Uh, quite small when you compare uh, the 20 million in Istanbul. Um, the gas price is, is half, right? It's, it's quite, a, quite a small city, right? And then I arrived to, to Istanbul only to be blown away by the surface area of how big it is. Uh, I was filling gas for the first time and I thought the gas pump was broken because the money was moving and the liters were not. Uh, and then I realized that gas price is double than Beirut. And I was like blown away by Istanbul, by all the potential. Because if, if I think about it, you know, like if I stayed in Beirut, I would have never, you know, this, this idea would have never crossed my mind. Right? The, the idea came to life because of Istanbul, because of its size, because of the Bosphorus cutting the city into, into half and creating these bottlenecks. Uh, because of uh, you know the scene I've seen in the metro bus and how many people are using the metro bus at, at the rush hour uh, because of the scene of traffic and uh, one day I spent four hours in traffic that like Lebanon not Beirut Lebanon the whole country you cross it from one side to the other in one hour and a half so for me I, I look at it as, a, as an amazing city I'm so lucky and I think everyone uh, is so lucky to be living in Istanbul it's such a beautiful city uh, but uh, this, this big problem that Istanbul is suffering from, I believe for us it's a big uh, opportunity uh, to solve and uh, it's an exciting problem to solve, so I'm very happy here. 
Regarding the startup scene, at the mature level, I can't compare the Beirut ecosystem. I have no idea and I feel bad that I'm not connected to the Beirut startup ecosystem, so I don't know much about it. Uh, but I think we have a rich uh, ecosystem here in Istanbul. We, we, have, we have amazing investors, we have amazing entrepreneurs, even the local uh, competition, like one, one of our local competitors, we respect them a lot. Uh, investors, not only our investors, like all the investors in the ecosystem are waiting uh, or are hoping uh, to see a big exit in Turkey or to see Turkey having its first unicorn, its first $1 billion brand. Uh, I think I think we we have a good chance we have a good shot at that we're we're trying our best to to be that uh, first brand uh, but uh, you know it's a great place to be an entrepreneur uh, and uh, it's a great time uh, and a great place to be in.